G'day guys, welcome back. Um, we're just doing another scenario discussion. Remember the point of these scenario discussions is to start getting on our radar when we're talking to someone, when someone's sharing something with us, what losses are present in what they're sharing with us and what feelings are present because it's going to be from both their losses and their feelings that I'm going to draw on to respond back. Because remember what our goal is. Our goal is to demonstrate that we're listening and we're seeking to understand what this is like for the other person. So the best way to do that is if I can identify their losses and their feelings and incorporate a response that has those elements, or at least one of those elements, they're going to get that strong impression. This guy's listening. He understands me. I'm not alone in this. Okay, so that's the point of these exercises. Let me just share my screen and we'll get into this. So this is scenario discussion exercise two and the scenario with, is with Brett. So here's the scenario. Brett is someone you get on well with at work. You know that recently his older brother died after a long battle with cancer. On Monday morning when you arrive at work, Brett's already at his desk. You say, hi, and ask how his weekend was. Brett says, I just cannot believe it. My brother's ashes were scattered last Thursday afternoon and my parents didn't tell me until I gave them a call over the weekend. The response of the colleague, I'm sure that they just didn't want to bother you knowing how busy you are at the end of the financial year. It's also a part of how that generation thinks as well. Don't let it worry you. So another typical response from someone trying to make someone else feel better. So that response, I'm sure that they just didn't want to bother you knowing how busy you are at the end of the financial year. It's also a part of how that generation thinks as well. Don't let it worry you. What do you think the likely impact of that response is to Brett? Okay. And based upon Brett's statement, what do you think his losses are? And what feelings do you think are going to be present? Which ones seem to be most clearly expressed? And then what I want you to do is imagine that you're Brett's colleague and he's made that statement to you. How do you respond to show him that you're listening and trying to understand what it was like for him to be excluded from the scattering of his brother's ashes? Okay, so feel free now to stop the video at this point. You can go back again and see what Brett's statement was to work out what his losses were and his feelings. We've got the response above. So you can let me know how you think Brett's going to feel with that, that reply. And then most importantly, what I'm really most interested in is what would you say to Brett? How would you respond? Okay. So stop the video now, get that stuff right. Um, at the end of this video, again, I'm including my email. So feel, feel free to ship me um, what you think his losses were or feelings, and most importantly, how would you respond? That's really the point of this exercise is to get our responses better, okay? So let's go on. So what do you think is the likely impact of the above re reply? Well, I think Brett is not going to want to keep speaking. I think he's going to be irritated by this response. He has a sense that his parents don't care about his wishes, and now that theme continues with his work colleague because neither of them care about his feelings or his perspective. And what's worse, it seems like the work colleague just wants to make an excuse for the parents and defend their decision not to include him in this important family ceremony or event. So I can imagine Brett is just going to shut down and walk off. And this person that he spoke to, he's probably not going to open up to them again because who needs the irritation, right? What seems to be Brett, Brett's losses? Okay, well, we remember the FIRM acronym. The FIRM acronym was functional loss, identity loss, relationship loss, and material loss. And I've done other videos on that, you know that. So I'm guessing that Brett, Brett's losses are going to be around his identity, how he sees himself. Like, who am I in this family that can treat me this way? What notion did I have and now has been shattered, you know? Um, so there's going to be an identity loss 
for for Brett in in his parents' decision not to include him in this event. And the relationship loss, there's definitely going to be some blowback as far as the way Brett sees his relationship with his parents and how they must see him and how little they must know him um, to decide for him that he didn't need to be at his brother's scattering of ashes. Brett lost the opportunity to be present at that scattering of his brother's ashes and to have some closure surrounding that loss. His parents have possibly treated him like a child because by not telling him about this event, this occasion, they made the choice for him, you see? And yes, as parents, we need to make decisions and, and whatnot for our kids, especially the important decisions like what school they're going to go to. Um, but certainly as an adult, um, I'm capable of making my own decisions. My my parents just need to um, notify me about events coming up and then it's up to me whether I attend or not. And Brett's lost the knowledge that he's part of a family which shares and supports each other through an experience like this, you know, and I would consider it, shall we say, normal that you would at least let family members make the decision on their own about whether they want to attend such a ceremony. So what feelings do you think are possibly present? Which ones seem to be the most clearly expressed at the moment? Um, well, I think anger, confusion, hurt. He could be bitter about this as time goes on. Furious, hostile towards his parents even, but exacerbated, perplexed, troubled. I mean, you just wonder how your parents could make such a a big decision like this. But clearly to me, the anger and confusion come through very strongly. Um, shock, disbelief, sadness, hurt. Okay. Now remember when we're speaking with someone, when they're sharing something with us, they will supervise our responses. So let's say I miss the intensity. Let's say I say to Brett, Man, you sound really angry. He might say, angry? I'm furious, you see? So, but he, he still gets the sense that I've listened. I'm trying to understand, but I've lacked, I've missed the intensity. Instead of being furious, I said anger. And it's the same as if I miss the feeling. If I go, mate, you sound so sad that your parents just disregarded how you'd feel about this. He might say, well, not so much sad, I'm, I'm confused, I'm angry. Oh, okay. So when we're speaking with someone, we're not always going to nail the intensity or the right feeling, should we say, or the dominant feeling, but that's okay. They're going to supervise us. They're going to let us know if we've missed. And that's fine because my job is just to convey that I'm listening and trying to understand. And if I'm missing the mark a little bit, they're going to get me on track, Okay. So <clears throat> based upon, you know, the statement from Brett, I'm going to, res my responses to his losses would be, for example, it's so horrible that your family didn't consider you at all. Or it sounds like the opportunity to say goodbye to your brother was stolen from you. Or it's heartbreaking to realize that your parents don't really know you. Okay. Now, remember, there's no perfect response. There's a hundred possible responses. But these sort of responses are just examples that are going to convey to Brett that I'm listening and I'm trying to understand. Again, I'd be interested to see what your responses were. Now, based on his feelings, so I've, I've let's just say I've heard his response. I've listed some in my own mind, some losses, some feelings, but I'm going to respond to him based on his feelings. I could respond like this. It's shocking how inconsiderate your folks were to you. Or you're furious that your parents couldn't, could ever think that it was okay not to include you in the scattering in your brother's ashes. Or it's so unbelievable and sad that your folks could treat you that way. You see? So, there's some responses to the losses. There's some responses to the feelings. But what it starts with is when I'm with someone like Brett, when they make a statement, quickly being able to identify what are the possible losses, what are the feelings, and so I can put that into a response. 
And again, how do I do that? Well, I imagine, what if I was walking in Brett's shoes? What if my brother died? And what if I discovered afterwards that there'd been a funeral or a, an ashes cer scattering ceremony and I wasn't included? How would I feel? What would I feel I lost in that? And so I come up with my losses and feelings typically based upon my normal reaction. Are they going to be exactly the same as Brett's? No, because we're different people, but we're both human beings and we're going to have a similar response. Similar. It's going to be ballpark. So again, let me know if you have any questions. Give me some feedback. What do you think about my responses? Okay. Too simple, too complicated. Um, and I'd be very interested in, in hearing some of your responses. Just shoot me a short email with some examples of what you would say. The whole point, again, of these videos is to help perfect us in the art of communicating with someone who's grieving, someone who's suffering a loss. They've shared something with us. And we want to respond in a way that conveys that we're understanding what the impact of this might be like for them. And the only way to do that is with practice. And these examples, these scenarios are great practice. And you can come up with your own scenarios and, and practice as well. But an important part of practicing is to, to give me some examples of, of how you're going with your responses. And I won't share them with anyone. They'll just be between us. You send them to me. I'll respond. And we'll go from there. All right, guys. Thanks again for today, and I'll no doubt come up with another scenario discussion in the near future, and, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay. God bless.